What's up, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Off Grid Neighbors. So today I had the pleasure of visiting my very first earth bag structure. So as the video progresses, you guys will notice that it's not actually a home and it's just a bathroom. But nonetheless, it is such a cool structure. I just had to make a video about it. So right here, we're in the first bathroom. As soon as the door opens, there's a lot going on. But I was especially impressed by the artwork and the glasswork of this building. And the smallest attention to details. Whoa! Tony, this is cool! This is so cool. As I look around the inside of this room, I believe it's a forest theme and I just saw a little birdie there, I saw a gecko. I think what we're looking at right now with all the glass is like a tree root maybe. Yep. Looks like a dragon. It does. It even yeah. has this guy, little guy on. And then the water is here and it goes to a certain level with this lifted drain mm -hmm. and this drainage feeds these plants mm -hmm. okay so dragon hand wash clean water drain overflows waters the plants mm -hmm. very cool so this wooden beam is carved out like this to make it look like a rope that you see in traditional Japanese shrines. So as I open this door to the second bathroom, the theme is very clear. And again, the artistry and the glasswork is just mind-blowing. When you're in this bathroom, it really, really does feel like you're kind of submerged underwater and just so much little details I couldn't possibly capture it all in one film and my personal favorite about this bathroom is hands down this sink I just never seen anybody put so much effort in something like this before and what creative minds to even think of something like this. And all the hands that bring these artists together and build one bathroom. All the time and effort that takes and money. It's really, really impressive. And I'm so glad that there's somebody out there in the world that has the patience and the determination and resources no, no, no. to do this because I don't think I can ever do this kind of work. So they've been working on this structure for about a year now and it's still not fully finished. I believe the doors are gonna be further glorified and I'm sure it's just gonna be like a continuous work of art kind of type of deal. Fancy hardware makes a lot of difference when it comes to the feeling of the place. So I'm walking to the back of the structure to explore some more. And this rustic door that's been so nicely framed in by this beautiful post caught my eye. So I open the door and it's just storage. And my initial thought is who puts this much effort into just storage? Again, the hardware makes the whole door way cool. Okay, now 
the last part about this place is the shower room. I'm not quite sure how they made this door, but there's a hinge at the bottom and the top so the door can swing. It felt quite heavy, so I'm thinking it might be wood that was plastered on with something. And that would make sense so the hardware can mount on and all that. So I don't know about you guys, but I am way more impressed in a structure like this versus like a big conventional house. Because a big conventional house, you follow a blueprint, spend a ton of money, slap some 2x4s together, and it's cool, it's nice, whatever. But a structure like this, you're working with curvatures, pieces that doesn't fit together. You have circles, you have triangles, you have squares. You can't possibly do this on your own. And you can't possibly think of all the small details on your own. That means so many creative minds has come together and worked together to build a structure like this. And not to mention, they need to be very, very skilled. Okay, one of the coolest part about this structure is how they recycle their wastewater. When the toilet is flushed, the waste travels through an underground pipe that ends up into this tank. Now this tank, as you can see, is heavily oxygenated. And you see the bubbles at the surface? Those are called aerobic bacterias. Bacterias that need oxygen to live. And these bacterias helps break down the waste. And as long as there's food, which is the wastewater, and oxygen, and space, which is the size of the tank, the aerobic bacteria will keep multiplying at a rapid rate. So same thing in this tank. One toilet flushes into one tank and the other toilet flushes into the other tank. And I just want to make a comment right now. Although the lid is open, I do not smell any foul smells coming from this water. So it looks like they have an optional overflow system that they take the overflow of the fluid from the tank number one and feed the banana patch right there. Okay, so this is tank number two. Any overflow from tank number one goes into tank number two. And it's the same thing, oxygenated water. But this is where it gets interesting. This is tank number three. And notice I have my hand in this water. And you might think this is gross, but this is actually drinkable water. According to the owner, that is. It is absolutely smellless. It is clean. And the key is this green rug looking thing. And lots and lots of algae is growing on that green rug. Also, this container holds some clue to this water treatment system as well. To me, this looks like a starter for the algae. Or at least some sort of microbial uh, formula that helps break down and purify the water. So here's a look from a different angle. This is tank number two. And you see the bubbling. You see the stirring, the turning. This tank is so nutrient dense. It is absolutely gold for your garden. Depending on how much rainfall you get, you would just take this fluid and dilute it with water and spread it on your garden and watch the magic take place. Taking a look at tank number three, one thing I realize is that the oxygen bubbles are coming all the way from the bottom of the tank to the top going through the algae rug. Now, although I don't recommend drinking this water, it is a fascinating system for sure. Okay, thank you for sticking through that and watching uh, another episode. So, I was in Japan, still am, but I was in Japan about two month journey. 
and I was in this island called Yakushima, all the way south of Japan. Um, it resembles Hawaii a lot, and it's 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 really really interesting how similar it is to Hawaii. Uh, not just the lifestyle, but the plants, and a lot of people are striving to be self sufficient and uh, live off grid. So this journey has taught me so much and I'm so excited to go back to Hawaii and apply all the things I've learned um, to my own homestead. Tomorrow we fly out and back to Hawaii. Next episode for forward will be back in Hawaii. Thank you guys for watching another episode and see you back in Hawaii. Thank you.